Um, now, we are going to talk about three videos in particular, and most people have seen all these. They were released, <clears throat> I beg your pardon, they were released about a year ago, uh, leaked actually, and eventually the United States Navy declassified these, and what is significant about them, I suppose, is that the Navy has stated that they don't have an explanation for these things. We've heard everything from drones to bad radar systems, bad tracking systems, things like that. Um, we're gonna show all the videos and we're gonna try to break these down a little bit with you, Mark. Um, okay. But overall, and I'm sure you've seen these things, at first blush, what is your overall take on what we're seeing right now? Oh, well, I know some of the guys personally that, that had these sightings uh, and uh, the sightings themselves, the videos that were released didn't say too much to me. Um, you know, the Tic Tac, the gimbal, and then that fast mover thing that was shooting along the, uh, the mm -hmm. water, uh, you know, flying. Uh, I analyzed all three of those for MUFON, wrote a paper about uh, for, to them about it. Uh, and it was my assertion that those three videos alone don't really tell us anything. They're not a smoking gun in any way. Nothing in those videos is released. The videos now, I'm not talking about the pilot's statements or anything, but the videos, the released videos show us nothing. Uh, mm -hmm. They don't give us any clues. They don't tell us anything uh, about the nature of the objects. The Tic Tac video, uh, you know, for instance, that is moving that that's completely consistent with another aircraft that's one of ours it didn't do anything outrageous on the video okay. can you pause uh, that george and you know that, that you. so when, when you look at the when you look at the video you're looking at an infrared image mm -hmm. uh that black is used for hot okay i fly infrared i have infrared drones you know and i i i help police forces find fugitives lost children okay I know how infrared works, so I actually use that background uh, initially. Uh, and one of the thoughts I had was that we were looking at an image with the Tic Tac, for instance, where the, the gain was set high enough so that you couldn't make out anything other than the hot spots, and the infrared hot spots uh, on the object. So uh, to me, that could have just been another aircraft that's flying the combat air patrol uh, okay. at a distance. Uh, now. There was a scene uh, where they said, you know, that it shot off at a high rate of speed, and they, you see it move out of the view. However, when you look at the AT FLIR pod, that is the infrared, the forward-looking infrared pod uh, from Raytheon that's slung under the wing of these F-18s. Right, on the left okay. side of the plane, right, yeah. Yeah, it, it moves around, okay, it tracks. It can move around, it has an independent, you know, uh, you know, uh, nose, okay, and it's following this object so we can track these objects. Uh, and uh, when when that thing was, when it was turned to one side, when it was readjusted and went back to where, you know, back to the center point, okay, it made it look like that the Tic Tac shot off because but it was just a pod resetting itself. And there was other indications in that video to me that looked like the pod um, was just recentering. And so the video didn't tell me anything. The pilot's statements, on the other hand, are very different, and that's something to pay attention to. Right. Um, now the, right. The that's gimbal, interesting. Yeah. I mean, that's and and it's now if you now the the gimbal where you have this this rotating thing, and the guy says, "Oh, look, it's rotating." Okay, and you sh you, you, you know you see this thing rotating with, with this these spikes. Okay. Well, those spikes were flares, lens flares, infrared flares caused by this, this, the gain being really high on the infrared. Mm -hmm. And when, uh, when those things rotated, they rotated in distinct segments. You saw that that rotation occur in distinct segments. Every time that happened, the cloud bank jittered at the same time. In other words, it went like this. This thing would rotate and see, boom. Every time the rotation occurred, the clouds bounced just a little bit, indicating to me that it was something internal to the AT FLIR pod. Yeah, we're going to take a look uh, probably at that the rotation. Right now. Yeah, sure. Po you know, uh, possibly the rotation of the uh, 
a filter in front of the AT FLIR pod sensor. Mm -hmm. um, and and then I took that and I, I demonstrated it uh, with the uh, uh, with a regular camera and filters. I showed how that worked and how that happened. Okay. But the jitter is the jitter is pretty clear, and the bounce is, is to me anyway it was very obvious. So mm -hmm. I looked at that and said, oh okay, that's that actually is something internal to the pod. Um, and so that video didn't tell me much of anything actually. Mm -hmm. So you can even see the I saw a bounce. Well, what, had, <clears throat> what the pilots were saying on this is that, and we can't hear the audio, but um, one of the pilots remarked, uh, "There's a fleet of them." So what they maintain yeah. is that the tracking pod is picking this up. And the tracking pod, as you say, it's located on the plane. It's got laser guidance. It's got a FLIR in it, et cetera, yeah. and so forth. But it doesn't have the whole range of, of vision or the whole field of vision where these pilots said it was a V formation. They turned and reversed. So again, yeah. as you say, exactly. the pilot's commentary is something to be weighed out as well. But the, it's interesting that you broke this down because obviously everybody has really lost their minds over this stuff. Well, but, but those three videos that were released, I mean, that third one where that thing was zipping across the ocean, right. um, I, I, I calculated the speed it was moving uh, based on um, a, a altitude it could be, and that was at, the, at just water height, you know, right down or skimming the water. If it was skimming the water, it would be moving at 175 miles an hour, which is hardly high speed for a UFO, right. but it is fast for a drug runner's airplane <laughs> that's right. flying at low altitude. Uh, right. And and you know the weapons, the Webs guy was really uh, excited that he was able to track it because it was a small object that he grabbed onto. You know, right. uh, now was that a UFO? I don't know. <coughs> There's, right. there's other things that have happened. There's other things that they said that are more intriguing to me than these three videos. And there's more video that has yet to be released, apparently. Yeah. So I'm, you know, I'm all for it. I'm, I'm, I'm a believer. It's just that these three videos don't do it for me. These are not smoking guns, as far as I'm concerned. Right. You know, well, so. it's interesting that you break it down like that, George. If we could pull up the uh, 2004 video one more time, there's one point that I wanted to make. And of course, this is from the pilot's perspective on this. Um, so if you could pull that up for me one more time, and I'm going to uh, direct everybody about 20 seconds into that video, where there is a, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a, okay, right there. Could you pause that for me? A um, little bit further, a little bit further, pull up the, on the crosshairs, a little bit further, please. Keep going. Okay, you're gonna see uh, some numbers come up there, right there. It says 99, it's very difficult to make out, but it says 99.9. .9. Now, according to Commander David Fravor, who was the first along with his uh, female, his wing, his wing woman to encounter these things and actually describe them as Tic Tacs. That 99.9 .9, in his words, is basically radar is sending a signal bouncing off a physical object it's sending a signal back that's how radar works now according to him the 99.9 .9 signifies that this particular object is not returning that signal so the suggestion that he has put out there has been that this is typical or suggest that this object is in some kind of stealth mode, which I found, you know, quite fascinating, you know, coming coming from his perspective as a pilot who knows what all of these things mean. So um, if that's the case and he's right about that, then stealth technology, if indeed it's being used, uh, certainly suggests that there is technology and sometimes, well, obviously there's technology and obviously it looks like some kind of intelligence, but I think we, we stop short of saying this is like, you know, alien technology or something like that. It's just something that we really can identify what this, uh, what this is at this point. But as it zooms off, as you said, Mark, um, and that's a very 
good explanation for this thing that zips off to the left here shortly and everybody thinks that this thing is at some ungodly rate of speed but that may not be the case at all well again their testimony is the most important part here you know if they say uh they're watching it with their eyes and we're only seeing a, a very very narrow view from an instrument you know from the instrument perspective uh everything i said could be true uh, but I want to know, you know, from them. But if you watch the video and when it moves away, there's indications that the rest of the field is going with it. Okay. Okay. So in other words, it's like the uh, uh, the the ambient background, for instance, is actually traveling with the object, which wouldn't be the case if it was just zooming off. Right. Uh, and and I think that the pod was recentering because it was a way to, you know, if you notice there was, there was it tells you the angle uh somewhere on there and the uh you know the angle you can see the angle change and that tells me how far off from the center it was uh, when they saw it and then i think it's when it shut when it shoots back that's when it appears to move out of the frame at high speed 